Folks, when we have an abundance of veggies and herbs in the garden, the first thing we might think of is that, what on earth am I going to do with them all? We've got peas here in the veggie garden. I've got flowers. And remember, every single part of what we have in, in our veggie and herb gardens are edible. So never, ever doubt that there is always something more that you can use. Today, I'm going to show you one of my most, most favorite salad dressings. In fact, it's the easiest, it's the quickest. Um, my grandmother taught it to my mother, who then taught it to me, and it's just a staple in our family. It doesn't come in a bottle, it doesn't come with preservatives, it is just simple homemade goodness. Um, but to put my salad together, I'm gonna wander through my veggie garden and find a whole lot of amazing guys that we can use, like these fresh, homegrown, no pesticides peas. Huh, we can't get sweeter than this. Just delicious. Come along with me and let's find some more. On my journey in the veggie garden, I stopped and got some beautiful nasturtium flowers. Oh, aren't they gorgeous? Completely edible, high in vitamin C, and really just add such a beautiful colour to any dish that you're preparing. Some rocket flowers, lovely. Also the edible part, not only the leaves. Some bok choy that's about to go into seed, but of course I've got the flowers. And some little Swiss chard, the younger leaves. Remember the younger leaves are way tastier if you're going to be eating them just on their own and not frying them up or, or doing some kind of bake with them. You know the great thing about planting up a veggie garden that you don't want straight lines in is not only good on the eye and easy on the eye and it gives you that soft meadowy feeling so it looks good but it's a great decoy for hojos. Whenever you're having monocropping you have the ability to really almost put down a beacon and say hello guys hojos here I am come along and eat everything that I've just planted that looks gorgeous. So by putting little things in between and just literally putting out and making enough space for your plant, so a lettuce here, a little viola, a spinach over there, some rocket in between, you almost create natural decoys and you will find far less pests coming along and annihilating all your hard work. So here, oh, aren't these just gorgeous? Some little violas. Remember violas and pansies, completely edible. Oh, look at this guy. Too good to eat? Never and then some lettuce leaves. Now, with the lettuce, uh, these are all the frilly lettuce. Uh, they're perpetual, which means that they don't have to form a head. So you don't have to wait until they form the firm head uh, on the plant. You can just go around and as you need some leaves, so you just pick and you'll see no other lettuce plant close to this. Strawberries, some rocket, um, some celery in the back there, and that is part of the planting that just spaces everything out. Oh, let's go and hunt down something else. Sorrel is a herb that I wish people would grow more of. And just look at these healthy, gorgeous leaves. Sorrel is you find it in a lot of those little salad packs that you buy. Sometimes it's got little red veins in it, sometimes just green, unidentified leaves. But because it's in a little salad pack, you eat it. Why not grow your own in the garden? Sorrel is packed full of vitamins, antioxidants, great to have in salads and also just use in a little stir fry. Really easy to grow. Nothing much eats it as well. If your veggie garden is looking a little wild and things are just bolting all over the place, don't be afraid to experiment with different recipes. With a little bit of research, you might be surprised at all the things that you can utilize from the garden to create a mouth-watering meal. What more could you want? Look at this, and it looks good. It looks good enough to eat, and that in my opinion, is what picking from the garden should really look like. You should want to go out there and get it. So, first up, what we're gonna need, salad bowl. Remember, 
our little excess bowl for any bits that we're going to have left over to make sure that they either get into the worm farm or into the compost heap. Never, ever, ever, ever throw them into the dustbin. So we're going to take, I'm going to start off with some flat leaf parsley here. Just take off the edges and we're just going to break these leaves off. A little bit of flat leaf parsley. I love flat leaf parsley. and You don't need to use it only just in certain dishes. For me, as a salad additive, brilliant. My sorrel, ah, now sorrel leaves, I don't like to mess with. They need to stay as is, because you can treat them almost like lettuce. Bit of celery, pop them in as well. There we go. And my rocket, keep it chunky. Leaves, remember the stem part, that part over there can start getting a bit bitter, so Grab it, turn it over. There we go, throw these bits in for your compost. Hmm, look at the colors already. It's coming alive. Oh, sorrel, I nearly forgot another leaf of sorrel. Some green frilly, same thing. Okay, and then down to my little peas. So what we can do is we can pop a few open. Oh, aren't they gorgeous? Look at those little buttons in there. Pop them in there, remember, juicy. Crunched them earlier, delicious. Give a few to the worms. The others, we're just gonna take the top off, just like that. Take that part off, and we can either do that, we can do that, and leave a couple of them whole as well. Mm. Spinach, I'm just going to tear that up. There we go. And then we start getting down to the pretties. Oh, let's pop one more spinach leaf in here. You'll notice that I'm keeping them in their little piles, and I do that because some people might not enjoy eating celery, for instance. So you allow people then to be able to build their own, pull their, out, or their own out, and literally assemble what they want. And that's what I also enjoy. So, oh, calendula flowers. Oh, edible, delicious. Throw the petals on. Oh, they're gorgeous. High in vitamin C, guys. And the orange calendula. My nasturtiums. And then finishing it off with my little violas. And I nearly forgot my rocket flowers. It's a treasure trove in here. The deeper I dig, the more I seem to find. <laughs> and folks, who wouldn't want to tuck into this? Yummy. All right, guys, assembly is done. And it's looking so cute and so gorgeous. Next up, my granny salad dressing. Okay, this is dead simple, folks. So just take a look. What I'm using is olive oil, and you're gonna be using equal parts olive oil to equal parts spirit vinegar. So just a bit in there. Yep, that should do it. Spirit vinegar. should do it. A little bit of water. Salt and pepper. And a wee bit of sugar. And then all we do is mix it up. Now, the best whisker that you can get when you're doing anything, eggs, anything that you're going to be frying, eating, or where you're mixing something, is use some rosemary. Two twigs that I've cut off here, so as you are using and mixing it, so you're releasing all the beautiful aromas within the rosemary. And we're just gonna mix this in, stir it up really nicely, and you'll see the oil is the binder, okay? 
You might want to add a bit more sugar, depending on your taste. You might want to add a little bit more vinegar, but I prefer mine quite tarty. So there we go. And this, guys, can last in the fridge. You can put in a bottle. Um, you can always zhuzh it up with a chili or two, or you could add a bit of Dijon mustard in if you really want to be a bit fancy. But this here has stood the test of time in our family over just baby tomatoes, anything, it just adds that extra zing. And when I am eating a salad and enjoying this dressing, well, I'm transported back to the days around my granny's kitchen table. Now, how do we put it on? Well, see, look at that. Oh, fantastic. All we do, drizzle a little bit over there. <laughs> this is the part I love. Herbs and lettuce and any veg. Oh, okay. I want to tuck in. Check at these. And this is where you get to really enjoy it. The, the dressing is one of those that will last forever um, and it will be passed down for many generations. But this is a salad, guys. No preservatives, nothing out the fridge, simply straight from the garden with all the ingredients that most of us will have in our home. This is the way we should be eating.